What's going on YouTube? RDAP Dan here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about RDAP Dan's tips and tricks. A lot of good, useful information here that you can take with you into federal prison that is definitely going to help you do your time. So make sure you stay tuned. Today, as I said, we're going to be talking a little bit about tips and tricks, what you can do to help make your time a little easier, a little smoother, in some cases, maybe even a little bit faster. One of the biggest things that you're going to encounter is your PSR interview or your PSR report. There's a section on that PSR where they're going to be talking about substance abuse. If you have any intentions, any hopes, any aspirations of getting into RDAP, it's very important that you are very honest at the point of giving your statement as your substance abuse. You want to make sure you talk about any and all substance abuse that you've had up until your arrest. It's very important that you mention what substances you did 12 months prior to your arrest, up until your arrest. A lot of people, for some reason, feel like if they're honest at that point, that they're going to get their bond revoked. It's going to cause them to potentially get additional time. All kinds of crazy scenarios start running through your mind. And in a lot of cases, the attorneys don't really educate you properly on this topic. So it's very important that if you have substance abuse, if you're drinking alcohol, if you're using prescription pills, if you're smoking marijuana, any drugs you may be doing on any type of regular basis or that you were doing on any type of regular basis prior to getting arrested, you need to be straight up and honest because I look at PSRs all the time and I'll see in there where it basically states that the client has no substance abuse issues in the immediate offense. Now, they may say they used years ago and then they stopped and they haven't been using recently. And I know a lot of times you think that might help or you don't want to admit you're using drugs because you're afraid of how it's going to make you look or what people are going to think of you, what your family is going to think of you. Guys, if you're trying to get into RDAP, you got to be honest about it because it's really hard. There's a lot of situations that you have to go through after this, if you don't properly document this in your PSR, not to say RDAP is completely impossible at that point, but it makes a new challenge that you could avoid by just nipping it in the bud at this point. If you haven't already done your PSR and you've got questions about that, please feel free to give me a call at 509-434-4695 or shoot me an email to rdapdan at gmail.com and we'll make sure you walk in there with the right advice. Uh, number two. A lot of you that are watching my videos are probably going to be able to self-surrender. So you're going to be given a destination where your designation is going to be, and you're going to be given a time to get there. A lot of the times, it's usually between like 1 and 2 in the afternoon. Do yourself a favor. Get there as early as possible on the day that you're supposed to surrender. It's going to help you with a couple of things. You're not going to get there at the last minute when they're getting ready to potentially do shift change where you're going to be aggravating the guard because now, you know, he's getting ready to go home and he's thinking he's all done. And then here comes a brand new intake and he's got to go through that whole process of fingerprinting, the questions, the mouth swab, where they take your DNA, the whole nine. And if they're not in the mood to do it, they might just leave you there until the next person comes in. So you're just sitting there in a holding cell and it may be cold. Uh, they're not going to let you wear any of your own clothes. You know, you're going to be sitting there in some prison outfit that's not really going to be the ideal outfit at what you'll be in in a later date. So get there with plenty of time so they have the time to properly process you and get you off to your housing unit as soon as possible. So try to get there earlier. The earlier, the better. Once you engage into the prison community, now you're there. One of the biggest things you can do for yourself is just listen and learn. Less is more. Don't be the one that has all the answers. Don't try to over talk people. Just kind of sit back and listen to find out the who's who of what's what. Find out who's running different things, who you should be going to for advice, who there's actually able to help you facilitate in. You know, you don't want to go in there and just start making a million friends right away. You kind of want to like be the quiet guy so you can observe your surroundings. And by doing that, 
the right type of people that you're looking to engage with are going to end up coming to you because they're going to see that you're not a know-it-all, a loud mouth, somebody that has all the answers, a quick fix. You want to do your time the way you want to do your time. And those of you that are watching these videos, one of the, the biggest things that everybody wants to achieve is getting in and out of prison as painless as possible and as soon as possible. And part of this is going to be engaging with the right type of crowd. If you're engaging with a crowd that's into, you know, shady activities, not necessarily flat out breaking rules, but you know, they're kind of like walking that gray area. You want to avoid that stuff because later on when it's time to try to ask for things like the additional halfway house and things like that, all of what you're doing right now is going to play a role later on. So just sit back, kind of keep your mouth shut for a while, figure out who's who and slowly attach yourself to the right type of person. Um, Number three, uh, there's no need to run to a CO or to a guard every time you have a question or you feel like something's not fair. It's not your job to fix the world while you're in this environment. You got to remember that each and every person that's in prison with you is going to be potentially your celly, your roommates, your housemates. These are the people that you're going to live with for the next however long you're going to be in prison for, the next year, the next two years, the next three years. So the last thing you want to do is create the illusion that you're the guy that's always in there talking to the CEO or the guard or staff members. Even if you're just in there kicking it, having a good time, and not really talking, telling on anybody, that's the kind of the appearance that it's going to give is anytime anything happens and people get in trouble, they're going to wonder if it's because you were in there talking to the CEOs. So you don't want to get that label as a tattletale or a snitch. So kind of avoid the guards as much as you can. There may always be an issue at some point where it's important for you to go see a guard. If you've seen somebody getting, uh, you know, getting hurt in any way, if you're seeing somebody getting bullied and you, you don't like it, I'm not going to tell you not to go tell a CO. Uh, just remember everything you do has a consequence. So by telling on somebody, there is a consequence, whether it be good or bad. There's a lot of COs in there that do not keep secrets. They do not keep stuff confidential. So you think you're talking to a staff member in confidentiality and in reality, they start letting other inmates to be careful of, of you because you're the one in there telling on everybody. So just keep that in mind. So if you are going to be that guy that's telling on people, make sure you know what you're doing before you do it because you don't want to get yourself uh, in any type of headaches. Um, another great tip, guys. Again, if you're looking to get in and out of prison, you're not looking for any headaches and you're not looking for anything that's going to potentially set back your time or cause issues or send you to the shoe, stay away from the TV room. Stay away from it. If you're going to go in there, sit in the back. Don't be the one to get up and change the channels. Don't start opening your mouth saying, I want to watch this. I want to watch that. If you're in the TV room by yourself and you're watching something and somebody wants to come in and change the channel, you know, obviously in a respectful way, you don't want to let people think you're a pushover, but at the same time, I've seen more altercations over the freaking TV than any other reason in prison. TV is a huge thing. Sports, TV shows, you name it. Somebody's got something that they want to watch day in, day out, week in, week out, like clockwork. Just like a lot of you have your favorite TV shows, whether it be, you know, Walking Dead or uh, basketball, football, these are big events in prison and there's not really much else to do. So people take control of these TVs. Like you're going to have your Spanish TV. You're going to have your sports TV. You're going to have your black TV. You're going to have your white TV. All of these different TVs are going to be run at the same time. You'll have your headphones in listening to the TV and somebody will come up and change the channel. And you may be like, man, I was watching that. And you might want to cause conflict by saying, Hey, why are you changing the channel? And next thing you know, you're in an altercation, turns into something, you're sitting in the shoe, you get good time taken away from you, you might have lost RDAP over it, and for what? For some TV that you really, at the end of the day, could care less about. So either avoid the TV room if you think it's going to be an issue for you, or do what I do. I would just go sit in the back of the room, and I really didn't care what they were watching. I eventually found a group of guys that would watch TV shows that I could tolerate, and I would just go watch those TV shows. I didn't really care what they had on because you're spending your day doing a million different things. TV is hopefully not the only thing that you have to look forward to. 
They got plenty of really cool movie nights in there. Usually Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays, they have uh, Netflix movies that they order. And it's institutional movies, meaning that everybody in the prison gets to watch those movies. And there are certain TVs that take priority that have to show those movies. So as long as you got your headphones and your radio, you're good to go. And the movies aren't bad, guys. The movies are pretty recent. Um, you know, obviously, it's like whatever you can watch on Netflix right now for the most part. The institutions, a lot of them have subscriptions with Netflix and they pay a different type of a uh, subscription fee, but they really kind of put it out there so you guys have some entertainment. So those are some of the uh, the obvious like tips for federal prison. You know, you want to be courteous of other people. You want to be respectful. You want to do your time, you know, exercise, eat right. These are all things that allow you to change who you were. Um, redefine who you were going into prison. You know, spend time writing letters. Spend time writing information home to where your friends and family can blog and put it on the internet. You know, there's so many people out there that would love to hear your story from inside prison because they're getting ready to go. Same reason you guys are interested in what I have to say. Well, give that right back to somebody else. When you get there, be that guy that's putting that information back out there, whether it be a family member, your mom, your dad, sending me information that you want me to throw up or talk about. These are all things that can help the community. And if we're community as method, like we always say we are, give something back. Um, all right, let's talk about some tricks. So we talked about the tips. Now we're going to jump into the tricks section. And a cool little trick is communication is key in federal prison. Communication with your friends and your family on the outside. Now, when you get in there, you've got your email system that is done on a basic computer, but it's not an email like you're not going to log into your Gmail and you know surf the web. It's gonna it, it, it's a prison uh, computer system, Core Links or True Links. It's Core Links for us on the street, and it's when you're in prison, you're using your your True Links system. So, in order for you to email your family members on the outside, when you get into prison. You're going to create a contact through uh, True Links in the email. You're going to put in their name, their phone number, their address, all of this stuff. Then what's going to happen is it's going to get verified. It's going to send your loved one an email on the outside to their regular email. And when they check that email, it's going to prompt them to log in and create an account with True Links. Once they create that account with True Links, they can accept or deny your the contact request that you sent them. Once they accept it, now they can communicate back and forth with you. So when you send an email, it doesn't go to the regular email, it goes into TrueLink. So they've literally got to log into the TrueLink's email system from the computer to check the emails. It can be a little bit of a hassle because a lot of times your friends and family will just flat out forget to check it that day. Meanwhile, you sent an email and the world stopped for you so you can't wait for them to return that email because nothing else matters. Their life's still going so they forget to check it. So here's the tip. Or the trick on your phone there's a cool little app you can download and they have it for Android and they also have it for Apple um, I happen to have an Android phone so I'll show you what it looks like it's basically it's a uh, just go into the Android store and type in core links C O R R L I N K S and this is what it looks like guys so once you download this app it's going to have all of your all of your contacts in there. And I'll kind of show you what mine looks like just so you can see it a little bit here. So these are the different people that I correspond with on a regular basis in my inbox. The beautiful thing about this is when somebody on the inside sends you an email, it immediately comes to your cell phone instantly, just like a text message does. You can click on it. You can respond right from your phone or they can respond right from their phone to you. So what that does for you is it gets the contact with you a lot faster. So you're not waiting for them days and days and days to go check their email. It comes right to their phone. Who doesn't check their text messages 24 million times a day? I know I do. So that's a little trick that you guys can use. You can download the app now. You can download it on your friend or family's phone before you even go. It won't become active until you're in prison and send them an email, but you can kind of walk them through the steps. And if you got any questions on that or you're not sure, maybe I did something too fast or I explained it horribly, shoot me an email or shoot me a phone call or a text message and I'll be happy to explain that process to you. Uh, another cool little trick Saving money while you're in uh, while you're in federal prison during the phone calls. Phone calls can get to be pretty expensive. You're given 300 minutes per month, 
And that 300 minutes per month can fly by, obviously. So A, you want to manage your time on the phone, on meaning if you talk every day, you'll you'll burn through your minutes before the month goes up. But if you talk every other day, you can pretty much make that 300 minutes last you through the month. Now, a full phone call is going to cost you about $3.15. But whatever it is, that full length of time you get before the phone cuts off, if you use it, it's $3.15. So if you issue yourself a local phone number to the prison you're going to go to, you can use, uh, there's a great company out there called Pigeonly, which I'll put a link to it in the description here. Pigeonly is the one I used. And what it does is it provides you a local phone number to call from prison. So instead of calling, say, your wife or your husband, instead of calling their number directly, you're going to call the number Pigeonly gives you, which is a local phone number from prison. And that phone number forwards to your friend and family. That way, instead of charging you a long distance phone call, which is going to cost you $3.15, it's going to charge you a, a local phone call which is only going to cost you 90 cents for that entire phone call. So it's a huge savings from $3.15 to 90 cents over the course of time of however long you're going to be in prison. That's a lot of money to be saved. Uh, the other way you can also achieve the same result if you don't want to use Pigeonly is you can use things like Google Voice. You can go online and create a Google Voice number. It's very important that you find out the area code and the prefix of the prison. So if the prison area code, let's say it's 561, which is you know a Florida number, 561. You want to find out what the prefix is for that prison as well. And the prefix is the next three digits after the area code. If the prefix isn't correct, you can still end up getting billed a long distance call. That's why I suggest using things like Pigeonly because they take care of all those headaches for you. Pigeonly also has a really cool service, guys, for getting pictures from your friends and family. Basically, it's like a text to them and then they mail the picture out. So these are some things that are really going to help you uh, save some time, save some money, stay in contact with your friends and family at a much faster pace. Last but not least, um, grilled cheeses. Here's a quick trick to make an awesome grilled cheese. If you happen to have a little bit of bread in your unit and you've got some cheese and you're like, man, I'm really in the mood for a grilled cheese. All you got to do is uh, heat up that iron that you use to iron your clothes, and that thing will make you a hell of a grilled cheese sandwich. Uh, if you're an RDAP, you're probably not going to be allowed to do that, but it's a great way to, to have an old-fashioned grilled cheese sandwich. Well, I hope you guys found some of this useful, and I hope you can benefit from it. Again, guys, for those of you that are getting ready to go, if you're in the early stages, the middle stages, the late stages, and you haven't contacted me yet, you may be doing yourself an injustice because there may be some things that you could just learn from a five or 10 minute phone call with me. Most of you that have either called me or spoken to me, not everybody becomes a client, but everybody gets some good advice and they get a nice long phone call, multiple phone calls if you need. You don't have to hire me to be able to pick my brain to find out some basic information. The things that you're gonna wanna hire me for are the common sense things. You're gonna need help with your narrative that's gonna be written for the judge, your character reference letters, which are gonna be from your friends and family, which is gonna go to the judge, a narrative that may be going to uh, for asking for additional halfway house or you don't have enough substantial information in your PSR to help you get RDAP. So we may have to do a narrative that's gonna to go to the higher ups over Grand Prairie, Texas to try to get that overridden. There's a lot of reasons why you would hire me, um, but not everybody's gonna need that those additional services. So all I can say is pick up your phone, give me a call, 509-434-4695. Shoot me an email, rdapdan at gmail.com. Guys, I appreciate you, everything you've done. I love the videos that you guys comment on. This is the reason why I do this. So keep it real. Get out of prison as soon as possible. And I'm rdapdan. Take it easy, everybody. Talk to you soon.